what can social media uh, do against regimes that are really willing to use violence against their people? Right. Well, you know, it, right. is Libya and Syria right. are those the counter arguments to the Tunisia we Egypt don't, optimism? We don't. We don't. But cer there's certainly there are certainly some some of the counter arguments, as was the crushing of the green wave last about this time last year in in, in Iran. Um, and, and this, you know, I, I, I said this in the original foreign affairs piece that uh, the, the failure of the yellow shirts in Thailand and of the Green Wave both uh, ran aground on the, on the willingness of the government to kill its own citizens. So uh, these, any advantage from synchronization, coordination uh, of, of, you know, opinion and action uh, can still be seen off with violence. If a government is both willing and critically capable of killing its own citizens. Ultimately, it can see off any local threat. However, uh, at a certain point, uh, the, the, the economic ramifications of that over the much longer haul become, I think, really salient. It seems to me that what the Green Wave did in Iran is it tipped a military-backed theocracy into becoming a theocra theocratically backed military junta. That the, the mullahs were unable to stop the green wave, but the besiege were, and that the, the, the events of, of, of essentially last, of December 09 through, through February of last year were the rise of the real military government, government in Iran. And Philip, uh, Philip Howard, who's written, I think, the best book on this subject called Digital Origins of Dictatorship and Democracy, it's a study of information and communications tools in the Middle East and North Africa um, says essentially the spread of these tools correlates positively with the citizens' ability to force the governments to be more representative, sometimes in large ways, sometimes in small ways, with one exception, when there is enough oil money to buy them off.